Hello everybody. Today we're going to talk about what goes into making your own center caps for alloy rims. First, a little background. I recently purchased a 9th gen Toyota Corolla. Mine happens to be a North American 2004. And while I picked it for its 5-speed manual transmission, which is a lot of fun, it's a true econo box. As with any economy car, it came with some functional, but in my opinion, ugly steel rims and hubcaps. Being a perfectionist at heart, I knew I wanted some nice alloy rims to dress up my weekend toy, and so the search for compatible alloy rims began. I ended up getting a set of 2003 Volkswagen Jetta rims for a fair price on Facebook Marketplace. This is one of them right here. I'm planning on making a future video discussing all the specifications I had to consider when finding compatible rims, which <laughs> there are a lot. But for this video, I'm just going to focus on the center caps, which are the little decorative pieces of plastic that go uh, right here. Now, if you were to buy rims from the same model or at least same manufacturer as your car, you're going to have an easy option. Go check out hubcaps.org. I'm not sponsored by them. Uh, put in the make and model of your rims, and you'll find both hubcaps and center caps, which is what we're after, that you can buy from them. Or if you're a cheapskate like me, you can just take that model number and then put it into eBay. And of course the logo which would be correct, which was a must for me. Now let's consider my situation. Rims from a different manufacturer. Mine didn't even come with the original VW center caps. If they had, I could have just painted them silver, or tried one of the center cap stickers I stumbled upon on eBay. <laughs> Who knew these things were a thing? But alas, mine didn't, and replacement VW center caps for this specific rim were expensive and hard to find anyways. So I decided to go a different route. There are also generic unbranded center caps online, but even if the inside and outside diameters are correct, there's no guarantee they would fit, given how, the, how many different dimensions there are, which you can see on this board right here, there's, there's quite a bit. And they also wouldn't come with a logo, and so I, you know, I didn't want to do that. So what do I do? Do I give up? Just give up hope? No, we're not going to do that. 3D printer to the rescue. Let's first take a quick look at the dimensions you want to consider when modeling your own center caps. First off, you've got the outside diameter here, you've got the inside diameter, and you've got the thickness. This basically makes a cylinder right here. And then you've got the shape of the attachment groove ring in the inside of the rim. And for mine, it's a flat face, and then it has an angled part in the back. So when the little tabs go on, they push over this flat area here, and then they click into place on the rounded area, but they're still able to be pushed out easily. And so that, that's something you'll have to consider when designing your tabs and consider when you're looking at your rim. Many OEM's center caps have a slightly curved front face and logo, which adds, to, which adds depth, but I went with a flat face for ease of design and printing. Remember, the front of the center cap will be face down during printing, and because the attachment tabs on the back would be very difficult to print tabs down. You'd need a huge amount of support material. I don't know how it would ever work. Assuming you want to make this as one piece. And so I designed mine with it to print face down, and so a rounded face would have been then also very difficult to print. And so I also made the logo a separate piece because of this same reason that if I were to have made the logo an attached part of the center cap, then to print it you would need all the support material that would go in between here and it would just it would have been too much work. And so uh, that's a big theme with me is the ease of design and printing. And so designing the tabs was by far the hardest part of this model. I made a little tab board which you can see the first one here where they all broke off because I was testing the different sizes and they're, they're pretty brittle. You can see a lot of these as well have tabs missing just from me handling them. I mean, you can just push on them and they break. But they are strong enough to hold in when you don't really jab them. Because they don't have to flex all that much. These distances we're looking at here are thousands of an inch. It's, it's not ten, maybe tens of thousands, but it's not a lot. And so anyways, um, I was just using standard PLA filament, which is not very flexible compared to the plastics that auto manufacturers use. So because of this, I went with the narrow tabs because, as you can see, some of them can break off and you'll still be okay. And they also have enough flex to fit, so I didn't go with these really thick ones here because these wouldn't have flexed enough even though they're very strong. You have to, you have to find a balance between the flex and the thickness 
to get what you want to get. So I would recommend making a little tab board. I might actually put the, the um, STL or sorry, not STL, the inventor part file in the description or something like that if you want to see uh, this little tab board here. Okay, so now let's transition from theory to design. The first thing I did was make a simple cylinder to form the outer, to confirm the outer diameter and thickness. Which we've got right here, you can see that would just fit there. And then the next thing I did was I, I made an educated guess on the tab design because it, I couldn't quite get my dial calipers in perfectly to measure all of the little tiny details of, of this shape right here. So I had to make a first guess. But then after that first guess, I was pretty close. And then there were just minor uh, revisions to fine tune the fitment. As a quick side note, I wasted a lot of time trying to import an image, uh, an SVG converted to DXF, of the Toyota Loto into Autodesk Inventor, which is my 3D modeling software of choice, uh, to use as a sketch for the logo. It, it never ended up working because it didn't form a closed loop, loop and it couldn't extrude it, and so that was a waste of time. And I ended up just doing it freehand, which I think turned out pretty nice and actually looks slightly more period correct since it's a little bit thinner than the current logo that they use. It's closer to the 2004 era when my car was made. And so as for the logo, most of the revisions were just focused around these lugs, which you can see right here on the back. They're pretty small, but they're the lugs that actually have it attach on to the center cap. And so if you plan on doing this project yourself, plan to have one of the wheels off for the entire time you're designing the caps. I used a simple dial caliper to get all my measurements, as I said before, um, along with classic guess and check. But since the center caps snap in and they're flush with the surface, if you had this wheel mounted on the car and you put these in, you couldn't get them back out as you were getting the fitment correct because you have to go and take your hand to pop them back out. And so, anyways, the basic idea of the logo attachment lugs is to simulate how a metal rivet works but using plastic. The little cylinders with a dimple at the end, which can be mushroomed out with a heated tool. I used a wood burner, but a soldering iron would work fine too. And so what happens is you just take, this one here has been melted, you take the, the heated tool and you just push down right there on the little lugs. You can see here is one that hasn't been melted yet. You can compare how they just get mushroomed out. And then that permanently and tightly attaches the logo to the center cap. And you're not gonna have any problems with that. And it's a lot easier than trying to design some sort of screws or a snap fitting because um, it's just so simple. And as you can see, simplicity and ease of design is a big thing for me. This transitions us perfectly into the painting phase of the project. I tried out four different paint colors and settled on these four different combinations that we have right here as my um, combinations to choose from. And so what I did is I just took them out and I put them halfway into the rims on the car so that I could still pull them back out. And then I stood back and I looked at them. I looked at them in the different light and I got a good feel for them. And I ended up deciding on the dark gray with glacier white logo, which is this one right here for my final pick. So now let's discuss painting and what I did to get the best finish possible. Unfortunately, it's winter here in Iowa, so the paint can't, I can't paint in the backyard as I prefer to do without standing knee deep in snow. <sighs> Not gonna work, <laughs> too cold. So I had to resort to the indoor painting booth, uh, AKA the basement bathroom. Definitely wear a respirator when painting inside or you'll probably do some damage to your lungs. It's uh, definitely not a joke when you're indoors. Outdoors, you, you might be able to get away with it. Um, and so I basically, I just gently sanded with an orbital sander, the face and the logo face and the sides here, which is gonna help both improve adhesion of the primer as well as reducing the 3D printed line pattern you get when printing with filament. Uh, another step I took to smooth things out was choosing a filler primer which claims to help smooth out surface imperfections. I also made sure to mask off the attachment tabs and the logo attachment logs since they don't need to be painted. The next, next step was, um, well that was the primer I guess I should have said, but next up was paint which is pretty straightforward. As for both of these, just read the can and follow it. And um, to be, you'll be tempted to just do one single heavy coat and try and resist that temptation. Try and do light coats like the can says, but uh, we're only human, right? So um, then after the paint was completely dry, and I mean completely since you don't want to get fingerprints all over it, then I took the two parts, which were painted different colors, put them together 
held it down and melted the little lugs down, which I discussed earlier. And so then I just topped it off with some clear coat to keep everything sealed and protected and give it a nice shine. So that's it for the story of my custom printed 3D center caps from theory to design to manufacturing. Now there's just one step left, which is the real world testing, which I'll be doing over the next few months of having these on my car. Hopefully you enjoyed this video, and if you did, consider a like. Uh, you'll be getting it on the ground floor here, since this is my, only my second video. I've got lots more planned for the future. You'll be one of the first. You know, it'd be a cool thing. So don't forget to subscribe, and uh, see you next time.